What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. If you're new to this channel, please do not forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell because we drop content like this every single day. And if you are returning and you watch this content on a daily basis, please do not forget to support the channel. Go buy yourself some Lockdown 23 and 1 merchandise. They're great stocking stuffers for the young adults that are going down the wrong path. This channel is for people that might be going to the penitentiary and need to learn a little bit about the state that they're getting locked up in. We have people on here telling their wildest and craziest moments about their stay in prison. If you might be facing time, this is a great channel to watch and prepare yourself. And if you're not facing any time, this is a great channel to get your ass back on the straight and narrow. Change your life now while you have the chance on the streets. Do not go to the penitentiary to realize how much you have just lost. Now let's get into the topic at hand, 10 things not to do in lockup. Ladies and gentlemen, I made a video like this about, I'd say a little longer than a year and a half ago. Uh, 10 things not to do in prison. Well, guess what? Prison is very dangerous. It's a very dangerous place and there's a lot of rules and regulations. You wouldn't think there's too many rules because everyone's in there for breaking them. But you'll be shocked and amazed that there's a lot of rules and regulations that if you don't follow, you will get tricked up. And when I say tricked up, that means ass whooping for those of y'all that don't know the whole street lingo. You don't want to ass whooping, you don't want your teeth knocked out, don't want to be drinking through a straw for two months. Okay, that sucks. Get your jaw wire shut, you don't want that. Shit, I still can't breathe right because my nose been broke so much. Look at that jank. Don't, don't look at my beard. Look at my nose, that jank crooked. <laughs> CBD's on this beard. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and get in number one. And look, these are not in any kind of uh, order, all right? They are all, you know, rules that you definitely got to follow. They're, they all are very important, all right? So just remember that. Number one, wiping down the freaking toilet seat. I don't care if you got every last drop inside the toilet. There's going to be some backsplash, okay? some backsplash on that toilet seat in your cell. The community toilet, that's a different story. <laughs> I got a funny story for that one, actually. I'll tell you in a second, but uh, uh, the cell toilet, the toilet that you live, you know, the cell that you live in, the toilet in there, there's some rules and regulations to that. Always wipe it down after taking a piss. If you don't, I can guarantee someone might give you a warning by like, bro, Wipe down the damn toilet. Why don't you wipe down the toilet seat, dog? Don't let it happen again. Or the dude ain't going to give you no warning. You know, he might just push your face into it. You never know. So take it from me. Wipe down that damn toilet seat. And number two, ladies and gentlemen. Look, the toilet and the sink are very important in lockup. You got a lot of state-struck fools that just want everything spotless. It seems like they, they go to prison, become freaking Mr. Clean or some shit, waxing and buffing everything every damn day. It's crazy. You know, I like a clean cell, but some of these guys take it to a whole nother level. But the sink, the sink is very important. What, what, what the hell do you think you need to do with a sink? All right. What do you do in a sink? Okay. You wash your face, you brush your teeth, you might trim your beard in the mirror right above your sink. Look, always clean the sink after what you're doing. And when you brush your teeth, do not spit your toothpaste in the sink, okay? That's nasty, all right? There's a lot of people in there that don't never brush their teeth on the streets, but you know, when they're in prison, they wanna get all freaking hygienic and start brushing their teeth and you'll see freaking nasty blood come out their gums spitting into the sink. Some of these dudes do not even clean the sink. But look, you do not spit your toothpaste in the sink, ladies and gentlemen, you spit it in the toilet, all right? I've made that mistake before and people are like, bro, spit it in the toilet. You know, and I learned very quickly, all right? You're, these people ain't gonna tell you these rules and regulations. That's why I'm here to help you out. That was number two. Now, number three, ladies and gentlemen, taking a dump, okay, dropping a deuce. Do you know that there is some rules and protocol to this whole deuce dropping? There definitely is, okay? There's some people I've seen get just dish ragged because they wanna come into the cell right after lockdown. They had all day to take a shit while everyone's outside the cell, but as soon as they say lockdown and they roll the bars or close the cell doors, they wanna put up the sheet and drop a deuce. You don't do that. If you gotta take a shit, I know sometimes, you know, it'll hit you when you, when you least expect it, but look, if you see someone coming into the cell, as soon as they lock the doors and they have to take a dump, 
They waited for that shit and they're disrespecting you by doing that. I'm a very passive aggressive individual, but look, some things I'll snap over, man. For real, and that's one of them. A guy comes and takes a dump right as soon as they lock down or they take a dump like five minutes before they, they uh, open up the doors. Like, come on, bro, you could have held it for five more minutes. But look, do not be scared to drop a deuce if you gotta go when the cell doors are locked, all right? If you gotta go, you gotta go. But look, there's another technique to it now. You better keep water on that shit. When I say keeping water on, I'm saying you better press that freaking button 30 damn times. Dude, before that freaking thing even peeks out, you better hit that water. Okay, if you don't hit the water, you're liable to have someone beat your ass through that sheet that you got hanging up because people do not play when it comes to people not flushing the toilet. Do you think you want to smell everything that that guy's got going on? In prison, you got some other things, you know, you might be able to light an incense or something. Light an incense. If you got some sweet smelling stuff, baby powder, if you're taking, drop, you know your deuce is about to be a stinky jank. You better start spraying that baby powder around. Do it before you even sit down. Get that damn baby powder circulating. You don't want, you don't want people smelling that shit, man. You know? So, uh, yeah, that's a very important rule number three. Rule number four, ladies and gentlemen, do not pass gas without saying excuse me. Okay, do not pass gas uh, in the cell. And if you do pass gas in the cell, because I've had those moments where I don't know what the hell I ate. And I was just I was just passing gas all night long. Okay, when you have to do that, what do you do? You get your ass up out the bunk. I don't care if it's top or bottom. You get your ass out the bunk. You go all the way to even though the cell is the size of a parking space. It doesn't matter. This is a respect value. Get your ass up and put those cheeks right in the corner of the freaking door and then pass gas. You know, you, you, don't, you don't do that shit right above your celly and especially underneath your celly, okay? Cause that shit's just gonna, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna come right up on out and it's gonna engulf right around the cell, right into the guy's face. That's how it works every single time. So get your ass up out the bunk and go blow ass over there in the corner of the door. And if you're in a crowded area, you know, those are, those are the best times to do it though. <laughs> Crowded area around the poker table or something, boy, you can blow, you can let loose anytime you want. Ain't nobody gonna know you did it. Better hope it don't make no sound though. If that, sh if them cheeks start clapping on the freaking plastic chair, boy, or the metal, the metal, whatever you're sitting on, you'll be exposed. Okay, you don't want people hearing that shit. So you better hope and pray it's a silent but deadly. But look, when there's a lot of people, you can let that jank just ride. You can let it ride, boy. Ain't nobody, everyone be looking around, damn, who did that? Not me. Not me. Whoever smelt that shit dumped it. Yeah, I'll say that in prison. Oh, new, old nursery rhyme riddles. I'll say them in prison. <laughs> and ladies, don't, don't act like y'all don't do it. Shit. Y'all ladies drop them damn bombs sometimes. Do -do. <laughs> don't duck it. This ain't just for the men's prison time. This is for the ladies as well. This is nationwide shit. Y'all know y'all be dropping them vicious janks. Don't be planting them treacherous janks. Number five, and this is very vital, very vital. Do not ask bet, okay? That means do not bet on things that you don't have the money to pay. Do not borrow shit if you ain't got the money to back it up. I don't care if your money is gonna be there that week, okay? You got the receipt until you have the money in your hands, okay? Do not bet, do not borrow because that shit is liable to be tricked up. I've seen so many people borrow all this food hoping, knowing they knew 100% without a doubt in their mind that their mommy and daddy, girlfriend, whatever the case is, was sending them money and it didn't happen. They were let down by their own family members. I've seen it so many times and guess what? They're not in prison. You think they really know the seriousness of what's about to happen? You got to deal with this guy and his money. Do not get tricked up, man. People get tricked up in that gambling shit just like out here in the streets. People lose their houses, lose their families. Well, in there, people will lose their life. Number six, and this is a toss up, depending on where you're at, but for the most part, nationwide, man, look, do not pick up a hanging phone, okay? They got phones that look like pay phones, okay? And they have cords on them. If that shit is hanging, do not pick it up, okay? You might pick it up and say, hey, anybody got this phone? Anybody got that phone? You know, but for the most part, if that shit is hanging down, that means someone has that phone. And I can almost guarantee you that phone is not your phone to be using. You know, 
Even out here in the East Coast, man, gangs have certain phones. You'd be surprised. They're, you know, uh, people that ain't affiliated, some of these guys, man, they will never get to use a phone. And if they do, it'll probably be like the last four minutes of the night, if that, or ass crack at dawn when everybody's sleeping. But if the phone's hanging, it usually means someone's on the phone still or someone's about to come pick it up. Always, if you see that, you pick it up and scream, if anything, if you are gonna use it. You scream out, anybody got this phone? You know, and then you do it, you know, but sometimes someone might be in the cell doing some, doing some dirt, or whatever, getting a tattoo or something, smoking a cigarette, smoking a J, and they didn't hear you. And then they're all high and shit, and they come out to the cell and they see you on their phone, and they gotta call their baby moms in about three minutes. What do you think's gonna happen? They're gonna take that damn phone. They're gonna punk you down in front of everybody. And then what are you gonna do? You just put yourself in a very dangerous situation because you did not watch this episode on not picking up a hanging phone. Do not pick up a freaking hanging phone, especially if that shit got a sock on it. If it's got a sock on it, damn, definitely don't even touch that shit because now you're touching someone's personal little sock. The socks are like our puppies, man. The guys that ride the phone 24 seven, they're our trusty sidekick, okay? I'll go to the poker table and I'll have a damn sock over my shoulder the whole time. I'll get a big ass lick, just licked everyone at the table. I'm going to the phone. They're like, man, get your ass back over here, man. You just took all our damn money. You know what I mean? Nah, I'm going to use the phone. Let things cool down a little bit. Me and my sock, me and my trusty sidekick are about to put in some work on that telecom. That leads me into number seven. I hope I'm on number seven. <laughs> that leads me into number seven, ladies and gentlemen. Do not back down. Do not ever back down from a challenge. I know sometimes, you know, I've, I've played scenarios in your heads where, uh, you know, five, five deep, they might have some shanks, uh, they want your food, what are you gonna do? I mean, depending on the situation, I might kick it, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Five dudes roll up on me with some shanks and I got canteen, look, they might just got that. You know what I mean? Depending on what kind of inmates they might be, depending on if I'm strapped up, whatever the case is, if I got homeboy, it, it's a lot of variables, okay? A lot of variables, but look, never back down. If these dudes are just trying to fight, you know, fists or one-on-one, -on -one, two on one, three on one, do not back down. If someone disrespects your ass, you better straighten that shit. If you're in the wrong, then you might want to swallow your damn pride, you know? You shouldn't have picked up that damn phone, but my fault, bro, I, I didn't know anybody was using the phone. You know, well, that's the shit that you gotta follow when there's gangs all around you. Gangs, gangs, gangs. They got the numbers, they got the weapons, they got the drugs, they got the people that would do shit for them. Very dangerous game when you ain't running with anyone. Very dangerous game, you know? It's a big ass chess game, I ain't gonna lie to you. You gotta play your position, you gotta play your role, you gotta see these things before it happens. You gotta become friends with certain people to get shit done the way you want it to get done. It's a big ass chess game. Now number seven, I, I got the numbers mixed up. This is number seven. All right, ladies and gentlemen, do not ever, do not ever, unless you definitely got the permission to do it, go into someone's cell and talk to your homeboy or whatever and you just happen to wanna sit on a bunk. You sit on someone's bunk, you have no idea who they are, you don't ever talk to them. Do not sit on some other man's bunk. I don't care what the situation is, that is one of the most disrespectful things you could possibly do. You go into a cell, chit chat with someone, eat with them, do not sit on that bunk. Even if your homeboy says, you good bro, go ahead and sit on the bunk, you're good? Nah, I ain't sitting on another man's bunk that I don't know. That's disrespectful. Do not let another man trick you up by saying, go right ahead, okay? That's like them saying, go right, go ahead, eat that guy's canteen. No, he's all good with it. No, nothing's gonna happen. He said we could do it. No, do, do not fall for them tricks. So yeah, do not ever sit on someone's bunk, even if the guy tells you to, man. You can sit on the bunk next. As soon as you lay those cheeks on that man's bunk, you're gonna see probably a guy looking like Debo coming to sell from D Block Cell 222. He just got transferred. There ain't even no mat on the bunk yet. It don't matter. You just sat on his bunk now. It's his bunk. It was his bunk during transfer, even though he's not in the cell yet. It's his bunk. Nah, I'm just playing. That shit never happens like that. But for real, don't be sitting on nobody's bunk. If there's a mat there, you know, especially if their bed's all crispy, clean, man. You don't, if they go to work, if they go to school, a lot of guys like to do that. They know they're at school. Well, guess what? These schools, it's prison, man. Shit gets shut down early all the time. Schools and work gets shut down on a regular basis. And these guys come home early, man. I remember I used to listen to this guy's tapes while he was at uh, school or whatever the hell he was at. And one day he came back early. So I was rushing my ass off to get them tapes back in place. You know what I mean? This guy was state struck as hell too. So uh, 
shit can bite you in your ass. Don't do stuff just because you know he's going to work or he's going to school or because uh, your homeboy said it's cool to do it. Just respect everyone. Treat people how you would want to be treated. Okay, always remember that. Would you do it? Would you want someone sitting on your bunk you don't know? Now, number eight, and this one's very important, okay? I came into a lot of situations behind this. Tattoos, do not get crazy tattoos, okay? Like crowns or uh, anything that could very well possibly, stars. I wouldn't even get no damn stars at all, you know what I mean? But, uh, do, you know, numbers, stuff like that. Stuff that could be gang related. I got a couple crowns on me, man. And every single time I go to a cell block, I got ran up on by some kind of gang, multiple gangs. And they'll be like, yo, who you running with? I'm not running with nobody, bro. There ain't no certain amount of freaking uh, points on these crowns, okay? This is like an eight point crown. What kind of gang has eight? Who knows? There's probably a gang out there with an eight point crown, but I made sure it wasn't five, made sure it wasn't six or three. Uh, so you gotta be very careful, even down to the damn rubies and gems, okay? I, I almost got in some shit with some crypts because on the crown on my back, it's got a big C on the top, right? A big C, and I was like, it stood for the city I grew up in, okay? That, that's the only thing I, I thought about. And uh, the gems on the damn crown happened to be six of them. I'm like, what's God? I told Pablo, the guy that said, I said God dang, Pablo, you're trying to get me killed up in this joint, you know what I mean? But, uh... Uh, yeah, so this show almost got me into a lot of stuff, man. I had to sit there and, and, you know, do my normal routine of talking my way out of a crazy situation. Thank God I didn't get killed behind that shit or get the tattoo cut off of me, you know? Luckily for me, luckily, okay, key word, luckily, I had some higher protection. But look, I was always, always, man, should get myself out of these crazy-ass situations. And I just didn't understand it sometimes because... <laughs> These dudes could easily dust me off, man. Easily. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, do not get no crazy ass tattoos that might, could very well possibly look like some kind of gang tattoo. Especially crowns. And I got a guy that's coming on that tells a story. He was in the army, went to Texas lockup, and got his ass jumped because of a five point crown on his hand. His wife and, his, and him got a, a tattoo queen and king crown tattoo on their hands, you know? They don't care if it was for your wife. They don't care if it was for your uh, long-lost child. They don't give a shit. All they care about is, hey, you're rocking a five-point crown, and that shit ain't flying. And ladies and gentlemen, I do apologize. I got the numbers all wrong. Okay, that's right. I'm not too good with countdown. This I didn't put no numbers next to the freaking list of things not to do. So we are on number 10, actually, ladies and gentlemen. Number 10, and this is very, very important. Okay, last but not least, do not go to prison or jail, even out here in the streets, man. I wouldn't even recommend you opening your mouth about these topics at all. Do not talk about politics or religion in lockup, because I can guarantee it's gonna turn into something vicious, man. I don't know what it is about politics and religion, but people get very offensive. Okay, there's some extremists out there that can't debate. They just have their one-track mind, and that's it. Anything otherwise is wrong. You're wrong. And that shit, if you keep on feeding into it, shit, you go in there and talk about your Republican, Democrat, whatever the case is, man, there's going to be some extremist that hears that shit and he's going to rebuttal. And then that rebuttal is going to turn into yelling. And then once that yelling turns into fighting, then you're going to be hearing the scream. Okay? And trust me, some things I remember the most about prison was the screams. But it is always nice to find that one guy that you can debate with and you know shit's gonna go peacefully. But even that, even that always turns into something else, man. I swear, every single time, politics and religion in prison do not mix. So that is another 10 things not to do in prison, ladies and gentlemen. And be on the lookout in a few months, I'll probably do another one, all right? There's a lot of stuff that you should not do in prison and in jail, even out here in the streets, man. You know, uh... Maybe I'll do a street edition one of these days, but please take it from me. This is wise advice. Wise advice, and anybody that's done time will agree, co-sign on what I'm saying. This shit you do not do. It could cost you a lot, man. It could cost you uh, your safety. It could even cost you your life, depending on where you're at. You think I'm exaggerating. I'm not. People have died for way less. And as always, I hope you enjoyed another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Do not forget to hit the like 
subscribe and notification bell because we drop content every single day. Go buy yourself some Lockdown 23 and 1 merchandise, ladies and gentlemen. Go support the creators that you watch on a regular basis, not just me. If you like another channel more than me, go support them, man. Go buy some of their merchandise. Look out for the cookout and support the channel. Don't forget to add me up on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, all this stuff. All the links to all this stuff is in the description of the video. All my artwork, merch, everything, ladies and gentlemen. And as always, I salute to every last one of you been supporting me since the beginning and everyone who's just now joining the Lockdown Compound. Y'all be easy, be safe, and stay free.